I'm Magistrate, I'm from Kent in the UK. Um, I've been representing Low Down Deep for, well, since it started. Um, I've also got my own label, it's called Sweet Tooth. Um, I've had releases recently on Players. Um, I've been on Valve, I've been on Bingo. I don't think there's many labels I haven't been on. Um, still probably got a few aims in life that, you know, with the scene that I'd want to be on, but yeah, that's me. That's, that's where I've been and this is where I'm at. I was actually at school at the time, I was about 13, 14, and I've always had a love of music since I was a kid. Um, you know, my parents used to say to me that I used to, you know, always drag them to a record store since I was like three years old. I've always had a fascination with vinyl and records and music and um, yeah, it's, it's just gone on from there. And when I was at school, it was like I said, around sort of like 13, 14 um, and the acid house sort of scene was growing and it, it started moving into um, hardcore. It was, you know, it wasn't drum and bass or jungle or anything then, it was hardcore and it was, you know, there was a techno influence as well. and. Um, used to be like RNS Records and Joey Beltram and uh, Jeff Mills and Plus Eight Records and it was all these like different genres of um, music before it actually grew into to jungle. But um, yeah, it was just a big group of us at school and we was all just really into music and we all wanted decks and we all wanted to be a DJ and that was the thing and we, it, it was that but that was when it was blowing up and um, I've just been into it since some early days. So yeah, I was a kid but. Um, when everybody else, I suppose, when you know, when Mickey Finn and everybody else started becoming um, household names and people started knowing who they were and they, they grew when the scene started growing, um, I was still a kid, but I, I was into it and I was, I was actually attempting being a DJ and I got my first set of decks when I was 15. <laughs> it's, it's mad, because I actually called myself DJ Pulse at first, but there was another DJ Pulse um, and there was a radio station as well called Pulse FM and it didn't really make any sense. Um, so it was a really random one. It was like, you know what, I've got to pick another name. So at first it was Fate. I called myself Fate for some reason. And I had a couple of tunes out on Splash and one on East Side as well under the name of Fate. Um, but no, Magistrate was like, <laughs> it actually come from a dictionary. Like, just open a dictionary up, picked a random word. And the only one on the page that would have suited as a name that I could actually base around it. Um, was Magistrate, so I put Magistrate, and it's with a J because if I had it with a G, it would be when it's abbreviated, it's Maggie. So, I, so I'd rather be called Maggie than Maggie, so I had to put a J in it. I've known X since he started out. Um, he, he used to be on a radio station that I was on, Rude FM, and I used to produce as well and DJ as well with another guy um, called Agent K, and he used to MC for this guy on that station and I used to have Evil B as <laughs> my MC. Um, this was, you know, I was probably about 18 or 19 back then and X was probably about 15 and we used to pick him up near the Blackwall Tunnel and he used to come up the, come up the radio station with us and I knew him from, from um, the other guy that I used to work with. Um, so I've known X for a long, long, long time um, and we always used to hook up every now and then and do a radio set and um, obviously when I moved across onto New Breed as well and We've, we've done a few mixes and, and stuff over the years and we put one out in 2009 and yeah, I think it, we just decided, you know what, we work well together, you know, we've got this sort of like energy and we sort of, we've always had a, like a sort of good working relationship, you know, I always work well with him and he always knows what tunes I'm going to select and I think it was just inevitable really, that, like we just had to work together so we've just been concentrating on it and I think we've probably got a lot more to come still. I actually started producing, the first track I produced was in 1993, which was years ago. Um, I was on a pirate radio station at the time, which was local, it was in Essex, it was called Syndicate FM. Um, and the guy who um, used to run the station was called Undercover Agent, Daz. And he wanted to start a label. You know, there was other labels around at the time, there was uh, True Players and um, Metal Heads and a lot, lot of labels. And he wanted to start a label and he just said that, you know, he liked my DJing style. And um, he, he just said, you know, I want you to produce a track. So he paid for me to go into a studio um, and I, I actually had somebody engineer a track for me, but it was all my ideas, took my samples along and like, you know, this is how I wanted the track. And it was, um, uh, it didn't get released. The first track didn't get released, but I went in again, did a couple more tracks and yeah, they, they got released. It was the, the second release on Splash Recordings, a label that he started and he started Juice and Splash Recordings. Um, back in the early 90s, about 94. Um, and that was when the first release of mine came out. And uh, after that, I had I moved over to DJ Tracy's label, which was uh, Inter Interactive, uh, which had 
uh, Mampy Swift on there as well at the time. And yeah, and then I met up with uh, JA sides as well and East side. So yeah, I had quite a few links back in the day um, for the releases. And that's, that's where I started. I started actually as a producer, even though like, my love was DJ and then I started as a kid as, as DJ and I ended up moving into a producer and getting known as producer before I did as a DJ. My production style, I, I was working with a guy um, called Nickel for years and years and uh, I thought I was doing all right. I thought we was doing some right tunes together, but you know, we split, we, you know, there was differences and we, we split and I just went solo. And a lot of people said, you know, you're not gonna, nobody's gonna know who you are now. You know, you've built yourself up as you two together. So nobody's really gonna know who you are. Um, but I, I thought I proved them wrong. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go in and do what I wanna do. You know, nobody's influencing me. It's just me, what I'm doing. So I just went in and made a huge batch of tracks. Um, and, and I think it sort of gave me an identity. And that's something I've never had as a producer over all the years. I've never really had an identity. Um, I've produced tunes, but I've never really, like nobody's really had like that sound. Oh, that's a magistrate tune. But nowadays people just know straight away it's a magistrate tune. And I think it was back then after that split, that's when I'd sort of set it in stone and got my sound and developed it. And you know, I thought, you know, that, that's what I've got to work on. So I just developed it more and more and I'm just continued with it now. You know what, I've heard so many things about Toronto over the years. And it's always been a place that for me, as I was growing up as well, you always heard of Toronto, you know, all the jungle DJs go to Toronto. So it must be a big place. It must be a place on the map uh, for this style of music. So it's always been a name for me to come out here. Um, but I never come out here until I think the first time where it was, it was uh, 2009. Um, it wasn't even 2000, no, 2011, sorry. Um, so it was only like a few years back. And I come out here in the summer as well and it's blazing hot and I got to see the city and I just fell in love with the place straight away. Um, and I've just been waiting to come back since and it's been all this time, like three years, I've been dying to come back. So big up DMV Federation for getting me out here. I think every, every place has got a, a different sort of um, scene with uh, drum and bass um, that I've seen. Even, even when you go like, for me, I look at America as a country, like just one country, but you go from place to place, it's, it's, I suppose it's like going around Europe. So you, if you go to the UK and then go to Belgium and then go to France, it's going to be very different, the scenes in between each country. And I've, I've just noticed that everywhere I've gone to, like particularly here, um, I've only been here once before, but you know, you can see that it's a very, very strong and passionate scene. Um, and the people that come out, come out to party and they, they, you know, generally really do like the music. So uh, they're here for a reason. They're not here just for a fashionable thing where some, you know, some of these places you go to, I, some of these countries, uh, you know, I might go for a stage, like for example, I went to Spain for quite a reasonable period, for about, probably about two years, and I was going there constantly, and then it just disappeared because they changed the style. They got really into dubstep, and they sort of dropped off the drum and bass scene quite a lot, and the parties sort of dried up as well. And I, I think this, the scene here is strong, and when you've got, um, you know, a representation of people that come out to a party, you know, for all these years, um, then it's something that's not going to die. It's on the map now, and it's, you know, 20 years' time, it's still going to be here. The same as the UK, it's got a, a base, a foundation, and it's built, and it's set in stone, it's not going to disappear. You know, back in the day, I couldn't get into the scene. It, it didn't matter if I was a good DJ, it didn't matter if I was cutting dub plates and had the latest tunes. Um, it was really, really difficult to get established. Um, I was on Call FM from, like, 95 till 97. Um, I, I was on there for a few years and it, that was the pinnacle for me. That was probably like the highlight back in, back in those years of my career as a DJ. Because um, there wasn't really anything else I was getting. I was getting the odd room two here and there and I might have got a booking through the radio. Um, but it was really, really difficult unless you knew somebody in the scene to actually break into that scene. And I knew a lot of people within it, but they were other artists and they, they weren't promoters. And I was young as well, so it was difficult to break through. Um, but the, the DJ now, um, you know, back then, being a producer, it didn't mean you automatically become a DJ, where now you've got literally producers that have to become DJs to satisfy the market. Um, and that's, that's what it is. You actually produce tunes to perform them out. So it's not really, a, a lot of these DJs that are out performing are more like performers. They're, they're, they're actually performing their music, you know, they're playing a lot of their own beats that they produce, or, or a lot of them that are, you know, associated with the labels they might be signed to. Um, so it's more of a performance rather than actual DJing and you know a lot of people are using sync buttons or other techniques to um, mix easily for example or, or Serato or it, it's so much easier than putting a piece of vinyl down on a deck and you know 
big matching and using that pitch and actually getting it in time because there's no trickery with that. You, you cannot fool that, you have to mix. So nowadays anybody can step up, step up and be a DJ, but you know, you know what, you've got to have skills really to survive in this and you know, you can spot the people that are fake DJ and you can spot the real DJ. I try and bring some energy to a set. I try and, you know, I look at a crowd, I, I select for a crowd. I'm not, I'm not there to just go there robotically to earn money and play music. Um, you know, to, to boost my production. Um, I'm, I'm not like that. I'm a DJ, I'm passionate. I've always been a DJ. I'm a producer as well, and I like to play my own music and like to perform that out. But, you know, at heart, I'm a DJ. I want to go out there, I want to perform a set. I want to I want to please the crowd. I want them to come away and say, Maggie smashed it. It's exactly that, you know, you can get a lot of hype around people that are not as big as, you know, what they, their persona might be on the internet. Um, we've got an advert in the UK at the moment and it's called like your digital self and it's about like a, a, a guy who goes to a hotel and he's, you know, online he's like better looking and, you know, everything about his life's better and that's pretty much what it's like. People big themselves up online and, you know, they can build a fan base and there's good and there's bad points with it. Um, I, I see a lot of good with it because if it weren't for sort of um, the internet, social media, then I feel I probably wouldn't be where I am today. Um, it's given me a lot more exposure, which I never got years ago. So now people can actually download sets after the event, hear what people are playing, hear how good the DJs are, hear how good the MCs are. And I think it can boost your career and it can help you as well. So it's, it's a good thing. And you know, that, you know, there's good and bad sides to everything. So I've got um, Independence Day 2 coming out very, very shortly with X-Man. Look out for that one. Hopefully we'll have it out by the end of the year. Um, next year, 2014, don't know exactly what plans I've got yet, but it's actually the anniversary of 20 years of my production. Um, and I'm gonna actually gonna be bringing out an album and it's gonna go back through time as well. So there's gonna be quite a few like remixes of old tunes that I had out from years ago. Gonna give them sort of a 2014 relic. Started on that one now, so hopefully I'll have that out and, and some information and more details about that shortly about when it's actually gonna land and you know more, more on the project. Um, no doubt, but yeah, um, um, putting some more projects together for Low Down Deep next year as well. I've also got an EP coming out on Players with uh, Sub Zero. Don't know exactly when that's going to be dropping. We're just finishing that off at the moment. Um, so yeah, just hopefully bigger and better things for 2014. Um, big up DMB Federation for getting us out here. Always lovely to be in Toronto. Thanks very much for having us out here and really, really looking forward to the party.